So, guess what happened? Um, when was this? Tuesday morning. I was taking my herbs, and I found a bottle. When I empty, like if I empty this, I'll make my own little concoction in it, mm -hmm. and then I'll mark what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw what was a bottle of Devil's Claw. I oh, think it was shit. Devil's Claw. And um, I thought, you know what? I've been wanting to try that again. So <coughs> I put two dropperfuls. You took two dropperfuls of Devil Claw? In my, yeah. And, uh, no, no, no. Two, it, they were only half, so it was one dropper full. Oh, okay. Um, oh, but uh, when I took my herbs, I realized I had not marked it, and it was tea tree oil that I had put in there. That night, I went jogging and breathing heavy, and I felt something pop in my lungs. And for three and a half hours, you could hear it gurgling. The, the fluid. It was like a, a tank of water when you like fill a glass, that gurgle gurgle. Oh. And I was coughing up blood and mucus for three and a half hours. I Hi, thought I was going to have to go to the you know, <laughs> Oh, are we on? We are on. <laughs> and you know, that's a good lesson <laughs> in mark your bottles. I just threw a a, a bottle of something away at the house someone <laughs> gave me something that was unmarked and yeah. it had been sitting there and I wasn't sure what it is and if you learn anything out there and when you're when you're experimenting and mm -hmm. working with botanicals and oils and things like that make sure you mark all your bottles when there, there's no mark on that I'm that, like I thought I was gonna go, I thought I was going to the emergency room I, bet you I was did. like Holy shit. I know what yeah. this is I know this is a healing crisis I'm not gonna panic yeah. but there wow. were I felt like I was drowning wow. it was coming oh, up so much wow that's scary. I don't know what to say about it. That is really, really scary. Well, I learned. I learned. Yeah, two I dropper, felt great two, the a next dropper day, full though. of tea tree oil. I felt great the next day. Did you? I, I did. Well, it could have cleared some stuff. I mean, <laughs> my, I don't know. You so know, I, I mark lesson. everything. I, I normally I try to, mark my bottles. I, I do. I know. Lesson in Herbology one. 101. <laughs> never leave an unmarked bottle around because you never know. And it could be a neurotoxin toxin herb you, you know, set aside or, yep. or something. Yep. I want to show you what Marcy had for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Take a look at the turkey. This is a fruit turkey. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That was pretty cool, you know. Looks just like a turkey, too. Yeah. You did a good job. I had fun with it. Yeah. Well, hello, my dear ones. You know, I like to give them any research we've been involved in and things like that, but to be honest with you, I haven't really had the time to really take a look at anything. Someone sent me this um, uh, new study shows organic farming traps carbon in soil to combat climate change. You know, I just nature just so cool. I mean, you don't have to convince me nature's cool. I I I just it it, it tries to make up for what the other side does. You know, when things are out of balance, it's like chemistry. You're always seeing this waxing and waning of mm -hmm. things. You know, for nature trying to pull itself into balance despite the human element on the planet. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, but you were doing some research on the hypothalamus area of the brain, yeah. bypassing the pituitary, and co and communicating with the adrenal glands during times of stress. Wow, interesting, yeah. huh? And same with digestion. Wow, interesting how. And but look at how the the transverse colon relates to the brain. To the brain. Straight up into the hypothalamus. Straight, and that's the whole point is that, and we don't give credence to the relationship, the symbiotic relationship to all these tissues. Mm -hmm. But when you get into iridology, when you see anything going up here, what do you always see with it? Transverse colon problems. Yep. And then it's like... Whoa. Look at the eye we just looked at. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, oh yeah. Oh, that was Major. a good example. Major. Major. This, uh, this young lady, young lady, having Nausea, dizziness, um, uh, extreme stomach pain, uh, heartburn, migraines, 24-7. And she's only 30-some years old. And, and when we looked at her eyes, she has a brown around her pupil, which is chronic limp stagnation. She's a blue-eyed with mm -hmm. chronic limp stagnation. But we also noticed the black in her stomach, which is degeneration. So we saw a black. Now, it could be a chemical. Right. 
but you know when you see black in an eye nothing is really good about that mm -hmm. so uh, this is in her stomach feeding the transverse uh, colon we were looking at right. and feeding right up in like you yep. said right up into that radii solaris going straight from the the pupil up uh, into the yeah, iris right from the pupil itself yep. so you yep. know the stomach if that's where the genetics was started mm -hmm. in the stomach hit the autonomic that's why she's dizzy because yep. remember the stomach is the brain of the autonomic so when you're having stomach problems you're going to have all kinds of residual dizziness vertigo mm -hmm. nausea all kinds of stuff like that yep. and she's yep. going to have to work herself out of this and the first thing you do working yourself out of this is get on the stomach or heal all tea and start sipping on it and get away from everything she was on the paleo and ketogenic diet mm. for two years mm. and it's like that flipped her over the top it's like, oh, I did do the one about the ketogenic. We were talking about yes. that, how they want to keep it in ketosis. And it's like, oh, that article was in the Townsend newsletter. And can you imagine that actually printed that? Well, I, I don't know if you shared with them when you did that video, but I was in the hospital nine times in one year when I was really young for diabetic, uh, for ketosis. Yeah. Ketosis is the same thing as acid. You do the same thing as acidosis, you know, and it's like, yeah you're keeping someone in that state yep. that sounds like chemotherapy keeping you in a highly acidic state when you're already when, highly I acidic. The, when I was in the hospital just this last Christmas it was for diabetic ketoacidosis Jesus Christ man see that's serious stuff mm -hmm. and when they're playing with this out of stupidity I don't know who put this and it looks like their medical names on that ketogenic diet mm -hmm. and it's like what where do you right. guys come from I mean it's just uh, these aren't this, these aren't smart ways to deal yeah. with health at Oh. No. You see, you can make anything work. It's like Budwig. Yeah, know? exactly, like Budwig. What, well, what are the two ingredients they're using? They're using cottage cheese and they're using flax. Cottage cheese, mucus forming. So right there, you're, yeah. you're subduing the acid a little bit yeah, with the yeah, mucus. Yeah. The flax is lipid. You're so we can see why it's kind of anti-inflammatory. Exactly, but you but didn't take care producing. of the problem. mucus producing. You didn't take care of the problem. You didn't take care of the problem, and it's mucus producing. So what happens is you have an immune. Your body has an immune response because it doesn't like the proteins in cottage cheese, no matter how much oil you put on them. Right. So that immune response you see is a mucosic response of mucus, and then that just makes tumors grow. So that's they what feed, cancer feeds on you. Jesus Christ! I so, still need to get you that picture. You do. You need to get us that. We need to get that up on the site. So we got some neat changes. We're going to have a whole educational section to us. Excellent. And that's just going to be a whole different section. Just exciting stuff here. Yep. Uh, healthy cells is not a pass. I was to see what someone sent me this to read, and it's like, do you know anything about P E E M F mats? You know, I'll take a look at this and read this, but. You know, I think people need to let nature harmonize them, not man and mats and, and magnetic. Let nature's magnetics, let nature's chemistry, that chemistry your physical body's made from. Let let let, let all of that bring you into a homeostasis. Don't don't let man's supplements and things, herbs. We're just packaging what nature produced. We we only cut them up or 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 um, or, or you know distill them together, and you know we don't hurt them. So you're, you're getting as close to that raw herb as you can. We're from, both of us are from Indiana. Hmm. And, you know, our grandparents went in the woods and picked greens and, and herbs all the time. That's what you do in the Midwest. What My you do great about. grandmother gardened until she was 102. Damn! So she, this is your she little She lived right? to 105. And this is my little girl, Tessa. I opened my little granddaughter. I opened the videos. Yeah, she was with her. Whoa! Yeah. I was open the open the videos with her because it, she's just so sweet, you know. Yes. And it's just, you know, these higher sweet souls. And I, if it makes us drive us to do anything, is to try to to create a world where when you come in here as consciousness, you you have a good time, mm. at least a halfway good time. These poor kids are not having such a good time anymore. Yeah. Sad to see the suffering that's going on with the kids. Yes. Well, I thought I'd do some Q&As. And um, let me see what this one is. It says, I have another question for you or Dr. Morris. I don't uh, think he has gotten to my others yet. That's okay because perhaps I can add this one and know you have been busy because of the classes. Yeah, that's a sad thing, you know. There's so many things we're involved in here that right. it's just hard to get to these videos so much as we'd like to, you know. Right. But 
we have a good time in classes and we do cover a lot of good yes. information in them, don't we? Yes. So it's exciting. This one coming up in um, in January, we've only got 18 people signed up for it, but I don't know. That That's where we're going to have hands-on. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to have round tables and if you don't know protocols, it's worth coming to this one because it's going to be just protocol city. You're, you're just going to learn exactly. Tough case protocols. Tough case city. protocols. You know, what do you do? Yep. What do you do? And you need to learn what you do. And then, because we had, we were just back there at some LD, which is a, a local distributor. We give you that when you come to our school. A lot of neat things happen when you come to our school, I think. But uh, this person had diarrhea and was on stomach and bowel number two. And this, this distributor, local distributor, which is what you're generally called with that, actually gave her a number three to fix it. Mm hmm well, number three is more powerful than number two. So now she's got diarrhea with the number two. You can imagine what happens when she takes number three? <laughs> you know, that's the kind of things one has to look out for and learn about using herbs because people can have some very unpleasant experiences doing this. Um, one, of the, one of the people here accidentally grabbed the stomach and bowel number five <gasps> thinking that it was, I forget what they thought it was, but they took like six of them. No way. <laughs> Let's just say they went home for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. I, I, t I tell you what. My husband calls the GI brew <laughs> the GI boom. <laughs> <laughs> I had one case. I don't know. I'm thinking I put her on number two or three. I, I don't know. She's saying she was constipated, you know. Some people say they're constipated, but when you look through their things, they move every day. Yeah. So, I don't know how I did this, but I gave her number three or something like that. Maybe I even gave her number five. I don't remember. <laughs> she called and she said, I pooped 32 times today. 32 times. She said, I can't handle it. My, I'm sore. I'm going, oh, crap. You know, that's not what we want. Yeah. yeah we're well, not you after, are getting rid of some extra you stuff. Are. We're not after super purging. Yeah. <laughs> so that was... That wasn't good, you know. You know, super purging doesn't do you any well. And I was doing another uh, a fourteen week protocol here, and the, the lady is saying it was a young girl too, and she's saying I can't poop. I'm constipated. And I'm reading through there and reading through there, you know, and I'm I'm looking at her eyes to see if she has nerve peristalsis, you know, or what it is, you know, hard wall from the right. lip stagnation and stuff. And then I read a comment on in her questionnaire somewhere. Well, I've been doing coffee enemas for three or four years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll go, oh, all right, I'm done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you give yourself coffee enemas, you're you're going to end up can't poop. I yeah. can just tell you. These yeah. are stimulants, and I've just had this fought Gerson Clinic all my life because Gerson was heavily Still. heavily sought after when I started practicing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then the FDA went after them for the. Uh, A's and the beta care actually went after them for using the oils. Mm -hmm. uh, vitamin A, they were using 100,000 units of vitamin A yeah. and 100,000 units of beta carotene. Well, those are oils, and so the FDA came on and said that's too high of an oil. Yeah. Now, so that's what I heard anyway back then. Yeah. And then off Just there. like the tea tree was too <laughs> high. <of an> oh, <laughs> holy crap, man. <laughs> Mark your bottles. <laughs> well, my lungs felt really good the next day. <laughs> if it's for the dog, make sure you put dog on yes. it. <laughs> I got mine for my dog and I got dog on it. <laughs> Fresh squeezed. Awesome. These are my navel oranges. Awesome. Isn't that neat? Oh, this is sweetheart. You can have this one. Mm -hmm. This is good. This is our, my navel oranges and this is fresh squeezed navel orange juice. All right, so. Uh, that's okay. I buy these organic cold pressed fruit drinks, only fruit in the bottle, naked brand. Uh, I've heard of that. Right? Mm -hmm. The naked brand, convenient for me for work, even though it gives me expiration date. It was one I was wondering one, once a company makes and bottles it, or once the outside of the bottle is exposed to light, or once I open it and drink it all at once, or open it and drink it slowly during that day, but it is refrigerated, or if I take a few days to finish one bottle, but also keep refrigerated. Any, you have to understand, anything that is bought in a store is still pasteurized. So it's still been heated. So. That's all you can say about it. You know, you can't buy, you can buy down here some orange juice that's fresh squeezed, but you're generally buy those at fruit stands. Mm -hmm. But 
And some of these sell lightly pasteurized stuff. It's like, how can you lightly cook something? You know, I mean, maybe not as long, yeah. but you're going to still hit the temperatures. Yeah. And that's probably FDA well, driven. Well, exactly, FDA driven. You have to you have to increase that and heat it up to a certain yeah. amount to kill off bacteria and things like sure. that. Well, what else are you killing off? When you well, that's it? the thing. You know, when you introduce heat to a chemical solution, mm -hmm. you're actually, if you're looking at it through chemistry, you're actually adding acids to it, yeah, right? Exactly. Even though it's magnetic, but so is the chemistry at one level. Right. So, when magnetics increase heat. I mean, you just have to caution to the wind, in my opinion, you know, yeah. with that. But when you add, when you're cooking chemistry like that, there's a couple things that happen. The first thing that happens, anything water-soluble, see ya. Mm -hmm. So that's your B vitamins, your flavonoids, anything that's water-soluble in chemistry, which a big part of a plant, alkaline plant, is soluble, mm -hmm. water-soluble. So you destroy a lot the of the enzymes. Chemistry. Yeah, oh yeah, and the en that's a good one. You destroy the enzymes, so there's no more enzymatic action to that food. It relies totally on yours now, mm -hmm. and and it's just on and on and on with that. And we we you know we really don't know what difference plant enzymatic action is compared to our own, and why it's necessary to have both. And then of course anything. I have an article over there that says that when you eat raw, you have to use very little pancreatic. Enzymes. I believe it. Digestive. I would just think that's just common sense. Enzymes. It would be very easy on the body. And then that begs up man is eating foods that require heavy duty digestive exactly. enzymes. Maybe that's why man is having some of the problems digestively. In a well, I read an article one time that said that it took, it can take anywhere from 60 to 90 days to produce another an enzyme to replace the one. Wow. That's what I read. I don't no, know how it, true that yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know either. But I mean, this is the thing. When look at Say you've got a bank account of enzymes that you start with, okay? You eat raw food, you're cashing a small check because the enzymes from those plants and, and fruits, the, the fruits and vegetables, are digesting themselves, yeah. basically. So you don't require a whole lot. When you're eating stuff that's cooked, or like the animal proteins and things like that that's cooked, you're cashing a big check on oh, yeah. those enzymes. So you've got all these people running around today eating whatever they want, and then they just do these digestive enzymes to help themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because why? They've they've lowered that bank account. They, that's not how we were supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. Not that's at all. And think about it another way, too. These implants are more coenzymes. So when you look at coenzymes, they actually help in the whole process. Enzymes help to release the coenzymes, which helps in the breakdown and the separation of chemistry. So everything works together. Mm -hmm. And when you don't have that coenzymatic action, then, you know, that's probably why you see very faulty digestion. Well, digestion is the first process in what? The food processor, this is a chemical food processor, this physical body. And if you if you if you don't digest and break your foods down properly and mm -hmm. break all these complex uh, compounds and molecules down to the simple constituent, you're you're done right there. Yeah. Now you gotta get what? Into past absorption. Now you gotta get past everybody's malabsorption problems. And for medical doctors not to understand these four processes and what goes on with these is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Because you have digestion and you have to have absorption, right? Well what can affect that? Lymphatic stagnation. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the third one? And sulfur. Sulfur slows down. Oh, can you? Well, I, I just wonder with these people that have that heavy that we see, the mm -hmm. heavy orange and all that, they can't be absorbing crap. Yeah. They must, I mean, they have to be literally almost starving to death in mm -hmm. some cases. And look at how this, the sulfur slows lymph. Oh. You know, just the two just kind of. See, and when people get mad when they're thin already and can't put on weight, and then they're going after detox, which is the only method to correct this. The only method to correct this, look around. You mm -hmm. see any other method man's used to correct this? No, no, no. There is none. So there's only one. And you have to reverse what you've been doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, and you get the sulfurs from the antibody. Can you, I was thinking about this the other day, how the medical community has destroyed, almost literally destroyed the human race. Mm -hmm. When you think about that, the condition well, of the cell. Well, it's not even the antibiotics. Look at all of the sulfur that is in the processed food alone. Well, and then people want to eat the box pizzas, the the box meals, the the cookies, and the preservatives that are in there. Mm -hmm. It's sulfur that's in there that they're using. Well, 
I, there was a health food restaurant up in Sarasota that focused a lot of the cruciferouses. I ate there once, got extreme gastric distress, and I didn't go back. I didn't mm -hmm. end up closing up. You, you can't serve just sulfur veggies. Mm -hmm. yeah, man, does, man doesn't do well with sulfur veggies, like Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, broccoli. They, they're good when they're steamed and all that, but they're also high in sulfur. Mm -hmm. And if you've got sulfur, and you eat a sulfur fruit or veggie, yeah, you might just see a little difference here. So I don't know which one you're asking me about. All I can say is what Marcy's kind of saying. Everything's already cooked, so basically eat it as fresh as you can, as soon mm -hmm. as you can. You don't know how long it's been bottled. Of course, there's dates on them, like you say. and It's naked. So what's he saying here? Uh, I, even the naked brands are lightly pasteurized, I think. Mm -hmm. It would be rare to get cold-pressed. Yeah. You can say organic and cold pressed, but still pasteurize it. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, because I don't know, there's a limit to what the FDA allows with that. And so I don't know what to tell you. After it's cooked like that, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. The longer you leave something out, the longer that obvious. Some things do better refrigerated and some things don't. You notice that? Sometimes you refrigerate things, they don't taste good anymore. Mm. That's something to them. Mm. So I don't know. Is the energy, alkalinity, astringency of these fruit juices now dead by which of the above situations? Probably all of those situations you just hence marked are also the lightly pasteurizing or pasteurizing would destroy or greatly reduce all the things you just said. Yeah. Anytime you cook things, it moves from an alkalinity state more toward an acid state. Everything moves toward the acid state because that's a corrosive. I'm going to break you down. I'm going to end up down in the subatomic particle again. I'm going to play... Lego set again. So it's that whole thing again. I had heard the vitamins are going after an hour of making a smoothie. Well, I don't think so. I tell you what, when you juice, especially if you have the, the Norwalk, mm -hmm. that thing sucks. <laughs> I mean, every little juice out of it, but it's a it's a bitch juicer, brother. <laughs> you ever seen a Norwalk? Willie's got a Norwalk up Does there. He? At, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a mess in the kitchen down there. <laughs> Well, he's a good friend of ours up in the Amish, Shipshawana, Indiana. Yeah. Naturopath up there. But, uh, he wish too. Yeah. You know, if you can get your juices refrigerated with a tight lid on them, they'll last for a day or two. Mm -hmm. Especially because if you think you're going to juice every time you want something, I'm sorry, after, after a number of years, you just lose that. Mm -hmm. You want to grab and go, go on, sometimes. Go online and find some of the darker glass containers like the the blues or the greens or the and and put that in the refrigerator if you want it if you need it to last a little longer if you don't have time to juice every meal yep. you know and you want to do it one time during the in the morning and have it last throughout the day buy some of those online they, they can be a little expensive up front but if you're careful you're using them over and over and over again well Walmart, if you go back to the canning section, has green canning jars. Mm -hmm. And green, when you look at color therapy, Marcia hit it right on the head. And believe it or not, I was, when I was reading through that, that had just flashed through my mind that it was gone. So I'm glad you grabbed it and got it back. <laughs> because I think it's... Teamwork. It, yeah, baby. <laughs> because it, green revitalizes. Yes. You, can, you can see it. So putting your, just in perfect, put it in a green container and listen, when you put anything like that in the sun, mm -hmm. full spectrum lighting, you're invigorating it. You're invigorating it through a green right. bottle, through the sun, you're yep. invigorating. Now, you're not going to do that with a smoothie, but you could do it with herb. You, know, you make could your, do it with your water that you're distilling. Absolutely. Put it in could. a green container and set it out absolutely in that sun for could. a while. Oh, absolutely could. Yep. I mean, you're talking energizing exactly. and stuff like that. Absolutely. But yeah, the green bottle, I have a lot of green bottles at home. Uh, I heard even the vitamins are going an hour after. Many I was wondering about the lasting time of healing qualities of these fruit juices. Now, there's no question that after, you know that oxidation brings it down, but if you can keep them in a tight lidded container, you'll 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 stop that to a certain degree. Sorry, I couldn't condense the question any shorter. That's okay with me, my dear. It's Phyllis. Mm -hmm. Hey, Phyllis. Oh, what's this? YouTube video. Oh yeah. Okay, I already talked about this one. Mm -hmm. He's got little red things on his hand. He can't close it completely. Look at that eye. Mm -hmm. Now, I've already showed them. I don't know if you remember these eyes and, and this hand. Let's see what they have to say here. Because I already did a video on this. 
Uh, my name is Jason, 46 year old male. So yeah, I already did a video on that. Oh, thanks for the. Oh, let me see. The official diagnosis from the medical community was serum negative spondylitis arthritis. You know, itis in any name is lymphatic inflammation, acidosis. It doesn't matter what long name is tied to it, whether it's spondylitis, lotus, or whatever. Any of the arthritis, it doesn't matter. They're all the same thing with lupus and Lyme and fibromyalgia. We go after them the same way, systemic lymphatic yeah. stagnation, and we win them every time the same way. I don't know what to say about that. Well, before before I started this protocol and learning about this and understanding it, I was in kind of the quote unquote health industry. I had a, a clinic and stuff. I had arthritis so bad in my right hand that my fingers would lock down. Oh, yeah, and I, I would have to, yeah, 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 yeah. I went through that for yeah. a while myself. And I didn't even realize what I was doing at the time. Even in the ha being having a health clinic, I got two cortisone shots. Did you? First one lasted for about three months. Second one lasted for about three days. Wow. Then I read an article on how it actually breaks down tissue, the cortisone shots. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I started on this protocol. Forgot about that part of it. Mm -hmm. I started on this protocol, and within six months, it was oh, gone. Yeah, yeah. That's the whole point. When you understand how the body's working, everything's just cells sitting around, right? Mm -hmm. all, they're all in their own country, educated to their, their, their journey and what they're there for. So they depend upon the chemistry you're giving them. And for medical doctors to think that no matter, it doesn't matter what you eat, that simply your bicarbonate systems will neutralize any of these acid ash forming foods and everything is cold, that is beyond stupid. That is, that is obvious. Foods are selected for species. You don't see, it's rare to see a lion eat a piece of fruit. And it's rare to see a, an ape go kill a, 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 a say an antelope and eat it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's rare to see those sort of things. Foods are for species, and when you change that up, look what happens. The proof of it is all our domesticated animals. Mm -hmm. Look at how sick we got them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, you go to a veterinarian and ask him, what happens if I feed my dog off the table? He'll turn around and say, we get the same problems you will. Mm -hmm. And they do. Yep. So and cancers it, and arthritis and diabetes and you didn't see thing. this. You don't see that in the wild. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. But. Nope. You know what else you see in the wild, though, which is interesting to me, is worms. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I've seen people open up a deer or something and see worms symbiotically living with the, uh, you know, the whole thing. It's like, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. It's yep. a, I don't know. But I've already answered this, Jason, uh, on another video. And if I, if, you know, somehow, when you're in this type of pain, just remember pain is acidosis. I mean, you can... Get some burn from alkalosis, no question. But let's let's keep it civil and and, and simplistic. You have a, you have to have look really hard to find something alkaline enough to get you. You can hold to your that breath. <laughs> you can hold your breath. If you hold your breath long enough, you'll al over alkalize yourself. So you don't want to do that. Uh, I Iona. I Iona. 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 Hi, dear Dr. Morris. Hi, dear sweetheart. Uh, I have two questions. Is that okay? Oh, of course it is. First, is it true that hair is a natural extension of the nervous system? I've never heard that. Possibly. Think about, think about the Indians. I no. The I, I can get right where you're thinking. I can get right where you're thinking, and it could. It, they don't cut their hair because it it has to do with grounding yeah. and all that sort of thing but i don't know about the nervous system although it'd be interesting i would think i mean looking at it another way this Your would send the energy down up. to the ground you'd have mm -hmm. to have a burn have the energy going straight <laughs> No, but like you can feel like the hair stand up oh, on the yeah. back of oh, your yeah. neck, or you well, can, when you start you're tingling. You're loaded and, with. Yeah. I mean, you can even feel the hair move the nerves under the uh, yeah. epidermis here, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Think of all these Could women. Be. Think of all these women who are getting laser hair removal done, all over uh, the body. Oh, that's bad. All over. That's all not over. good. That's that's ridiculous. You know, 
I was thinking about that the other day. Man needs to accept us how we are. Hair's okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, if our hair is damaged by chemicals and medicine, should we cut them and let them grow? I would. If you damage your hair, cut it off and regrow it. I mean, you have to shave it down to a burst. Some of these people are unreal. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I wouldn't play with anything other than henna, would you? Dye wise, yeah. stuff like that. And then even that, I don't know. Ladies who want to lighten their hair, add some lemon to it. You know, yeah. the, hair, the hairdressers are probably <laughs> going to scream at me, but yeah. I put some lemon in my hair and go to the beach and pssst, I have go. natural highlights. There you go. That's the way to do it. I've heard that too, you know. Last, if someone prefers very hot water and shower, does this indicate something bad for the person's health? No. No, I like hot, but then finish it off with cold. Mm -hmm. Get it real hot, you know, get yourself really warm and hot, and then maybe even sweating up, and then cool it down as mm -hmm. much as you can take it, baby. Uh, this indicates something. No, thank you for it. could mean a low thyroid. I mean, yeah. if you're if you're really that cool and uh, that warm really feels you good, because I'm kind of that way. I don't mm -hmm. run a little low thyroid, you know. It's like, comes from Indiana when you freeze up there and get frostbite yeah. and stuff. You're on registers with blankets and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope I answered. We answered that okay. But I would say this: quit using damaged chemicals, ladies. You, you enjoy your beautiful hair like it is, and you guys start giving the women beautiful hair. Uh, I started, I actually started putting a little castor oil on once or twice oh, a week. Oh, wow. And I can't believe how much darker my hair has gotten. Really? Yeah. Now, of course, I don't have any gray yet. I tease my sister because she's got... You don't have any gray yet? No, I don't have any gray yet. Okay, so, so I... don't I got, have to worry about it yet. All right, so I got one for you. Now, I've already told this was a long time ago, but this is an interesting case. And this was a lady that, that owned Blessed Herbs at the time, right? And she was heavy set. Mm-hmm. She was not a raw foodist, too much, a little here and there, you know, but, um, but she was an herbalist, mm -hmm. right? And that, their company made our herbs originally because I researched and found that they, they did the one to five at the time. I made ours one to four mm -hmm. because it was more, it was just more powerful, but he made all his at one to five because one to four costs us a lot more money. Right. When you see the price on our herbs, you just got to remember these are one to four concentrates. No company makes one to four out there for anybody, and especially on the market. You're not going to go in a health food store and buy one to four. You're not even going to probably buy one to five concentrates. You know I mean, Christopher's was one to seven at one time. That's like water. That's nothing. So anyway, she gets T-cell lymphoma mm -hmm. and calls me up. T cell lymphoma, which is interesting to me, right? mm -hmm. T cell lymphoma. So she calls me up, and I say, "Well, this is what you got to do. You got to get on the fruit, berries, and melons. That's it. You make our herbs, so you have access to all the herbs." Well, she had gotten complacent about her herbs and stuff, and so she got excited then. So during this journey, and it only took me about four months or less to fix this problem, her hair went from salt and pepper to pepper to blonde. To blonde. She said. I was born with blonde. Hmm. So when you said that, it tripped a thing in my mind that just the very types of food we eat could change our t our hair color. Oh, I have numerous clients yeah. that come in and their hair is starting to oh, go yeah, Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Once you get, I just need to have sick, sucking down upper circulation, get this yeah. thing moving. Absolutely, because when you see it in all our clients, they come in, their hair is starting their natural color again. It's got, been on upper circuit, have you? Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> upper circuit brain and nerve, it gives you an edge. little fuzz here, <laughs> the hair yeah. is growing. <laughs> I had a guy, <clears throat> he bet me $100. He, he was a bowling ball, you know, and he was only 40 something. I said, I haven't put a hair on your, your head there. That's a bowling ball. He said, the hell you can. <laughs> I said, I'll bet you 100 Should have bet him 1000 <laughs> Then pretty soon, sprouts everywhere and his hair was going like this. <laughs> You know, you look at what takes things off. It's, balding isn't a natural phenomenon, guys. Yeah. It's a bad chemical phenomenon. It's an acid chemical phenomenon. And what system deals with the acids? Again, back to the great lymphatic yep. system. That's why we're a broken record with it. There's only two blood or chemical-based systems of the body. Everybody else are just cells hanging out waiting for the goodies mm -hmm. or to eliminate their waste. One thing we're talking about, I've been noticing, have you looked at the number of people who are coming in with spots, lacunas in the duodenum. In the duodenum area? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see that all, the, the bowel looks horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just, and, and they're, they're, they're struggling 
with acidosis Digestion. and pain. Oh yeah. Well, right. you see that whole area there. You can imagine. You know, but think about this. Because this is the one we just talked about. And she was complaining she had gastritis. I mean, mm -hmm. her list of things. She's only 30-something years old. And I noticed like, that's what I was looking at when I, I, I was looking at the duodenum area. Did you see that? Yeah. And interstitial. Mm -hmm. You know, chronic in that area. Yep. Chronic. Yep. And I've been looking at the left side because I want to show you. I got several of those. Yeah. Uh, so I want to get with you on that. We're, we're designing a new Irish chart that we think is more spot on, more real, and to what we know in modern iridology. Mm -hmm. And also where you can understand the difference between a lymphatic look in an eye and the lacuna look in an eye. Yeah. The big difference too. And it really helps to explain because when Jensen was always trying to explain the colors, it didn't work out with me. Mm -hmm. It didn't. It didn't. But now that we know that the colors are indicative of the lymph the, the level of lymph stagnation. Exactly. That, that shows a whole new light on colors. And then you can get into the tribecula and then the lacunas and crypts and things like that. Yep. All right, so Dana, uh, my name is... Uh, Daniela. Daniela from Romania. 37 years young, my dear one. Beautiful country. Mm -hmm, beautiful, beautiful country. Got a lot of good people in Romania, but mm -hmm. they're very sick in Romania, I'm mm -hmm. going to tell you. We have a homeopathic friend in Romania. Yeah. I have been uh, avidly reading your books and watching your amazing videos. Thank you, dear one. Thank you so much. I love your energy. I love you, too. Your spiritual insights, and every day I'm watching at least one of your YouTube videos. I'm also applying your teachings into my life. I'm consuming 80 to 90 percent fruits every day. This this lady is kicking butt. Yeah. Some salads, nuts, and avocados, and sometimes I feel the need to make myself vegetable soups and cooked uh, quinoa. Uh, I feel great. Yeah. And there is a sense of balance with her in this. I feel that. And that's pretty good. I mean, it's, it's smart to ride with a sense of balance. When you need to get strict, you get strict. When you mm -hmm. need to pull yourself in balance, pull yourself in balance. And it keeps you feeling good. Yep. And watch drinking bottles of uh, tea tree oil, not much. <laughs> I have self-educated on the topic of uh, veganism and raw food since 2012. Reading a lot. Last year, I have attended a nutritional course at of six months here in Romania to get a local certification. Excellent. Sometimes you got to do that. Yeah. Smart lady, you know, she's just doing everything right. The course was on general nutrition, but the lecturer gave us a lot of insight into plant-based diet, emotional healing, that's mm -hmm. your side, um, or I started digging up information myself. I came across a doctor in Romania, Dr. Serena, so, yeah, that's so. that, that's her, huh. She uh, who has attended your international school of detoxification level one and two, and that's her. Yeah, she's a homeopathic physician, and she has developed an online course based on your teachings, and I am taking her course online. Excellent. Excellent. You know, getting yourself savvy. I love you guys. You're getting yourself smart. I mean, we, we, we turn to our, our YouTubers and stuff. These guys, parathyroid, pituitary, bam, yeah. bam, bam. Yeah. It's like you can't even get a medical doctor to do that. And these guys are going bam, bam, and fixing people. It's like, I love it. Exactly. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Exactly. You guys are cool. Yeah, it's really cool stuff. My question to you are regarding three matters. One, if I am to start an online course with certification on raw foods and detoxification, shall I start with your level one DVD discourse? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can take ours, their, hers. I don't know what hers is. Yeah. You know, but however you want to do it, we just get yourself educated. Mm -hmm. Get yourself certificates on the wall a little bit. That'll help people to, oh, they know what they're talking about type of thing, even though you guys already are kicking butt. Mm -hmm. You know, it isn't, the, it isn't the piece of paper on the wall that makes you a good healer. So, but in our society, they love to see little papers on the freaking wall. It's like, ah, if you knew how to ask the right questions, then you would know whether your practitioner is one you want or not. Yeah. You should always ask your practitioner all the questions you want or ones we'll give you to ask them. Mm -hmm. Because if they're not in your arena of consciousness, go away and get someone else, you know. Matter of fact, that reminds me before I finish this. It reminds me of a lady that took her list of herbs that I wrote out for a 14 week protocol to a chiropractor. <laughs> and he looked at it. He's supposed to be a kinesiologist or some crap like that. He looked at it and said, Oh no, those herbs are not good for you. They, they, they don't, they don't, I don't feel those herbs are good for you, every one of them. See, and that's the sort of practitioner you want to get away from because he's not in harmony with all of us. And you want practitioners that are in harmony with us. Did he even muscle test her? No. <laughs> he, she only had a piece of paper with him written on it. 
Are you kidding? So it was just that sort and of so thing. And so he, this is the thing. If it's written on it, it would be kidney and bladder. Oh no, you don't need kidney and bladder. Exactly. Exactly. It would be adrenal. Oh no, oh, you you don't, I don't adrenal. feel you need But here's a supplement with yeah. oh, adrenal, kidney and bladder in it. <laughs> I know. It's it, it just that sort of thing. So be careful about the charlatans, the chiropractors and things that think they're something that they're not. They, they don't know how to cure people. If you know how to cure people, you're going to look at these herbs and go, wow. Wow. And he, the chiropractor, should be carrying the herbs for you. We have a lot of chiropractors carry herbs for us. Mm -hmm. And because they know it works. They've done it on themselves. But you get some of these chiropractors out there, and yeah, they don't know what to say. But I just I was thought about that. I don't know why, why I brought that up here. At the number two, at the moment, I am searching for another online course focused on health coaching so I could practice internationally. Once that would give me tools to work with, on clients on a psychological level as well when it comes to changing diet and staying motivated. Do you have any suggestions on a suitable health coaching online course? Not me. Well, I know a school that has naturopathic psychology, which is my next one. I don't know if you'd be interested in that. It's Kingdom College. Um, but, you know. I don't know too many that focus on that by themselves, you know, because. It's hard to get our field at any level, mm -hmm. but to get into natural health at the psychological levels, yeah. that's a stretch because you would have to understand the physiological symptomology of the endocrine glands and when they go down, when they come hyper or hypo, before you can then lump it into an emotional or a mental affair. And that's part of the problem with depression. They call it a mental disease. It's not a disease at all. It's calcium utilization problems. Mm -hmm. You fix, and that's a physiological problem. You fix that, and you don't have depression anymore. So they're they're lumping things into and making them think that you have mental health problems because they don't understand what's causing it. Mm -hmm. And and we fix this through the, the chemistry side. But of course, there are mental. There is the mind, and there's aberrated minds out there. Mm -hmm. No question about it. But not when it comes to depression and anxiety and symptoms like that. That's all physiological, easy to fix chemical symptoms. Mm -hmm. But you have your deeper aberrated levels, no question, emotionally and mentally and everything else. And that's why I, I teach greatly to pull back from your mind and emotions, because when you engage desire, you're engaging your emotions however they rock. And when you're engaging thought, you're engaging your mind, however you've let your mind be trained or used. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be real and, 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 and original, you want to pull back beyond your conditioned mind and emotions to the original, to soul, to consciousness. And then that God moves through you and you, you'll see then you know, yeah. because then you're not tainted by thoughts and emotions and, and the garbage of creation. So that's how I, I, I would do that and be careful about it because you have to realize that everything that has a physical body, remember we talked about the God world chart and how that maps out. Well, remember that? So let's say you, you went to a psychiatrist, right, for some help. And I said, well, you know what, let's do some hypnosis. You best be very careful because every soul that you come in contact also has all these bodies. And your conscious mind a lot of times is not aware of your, can I use the word higher mind just for the sake of it? So some people have not so good motives deep within themselves that they might not even know consciously. So be very careful how you allow yourself to be used by others. Mm -hmm. Period. End of story. Because a lot of people on different levels try to start using you and controlling you and it's interesting. Well, you're looking at your psychiatrist too and it's become almost a, a fad to go to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist usually puts you on a medicine. They just do. Not only that, but that goes on your record and that has yeah. been affecting oh, yeah. more and more people within the workforce and, and you know, they're field of interest that they're trying to get into. I'm, I'm dealing with one right now. 16 year old girl is, a t is, is suicidal. Yeah. Oh, and God, was... her mom wants to take her to a psychiatrist. Now the girl wants to become a surgeon. Now think down the line. She's 16. She goes, she goes for suicide. They give her, they put her on medicine and that goes on her record. Yep. How does that affect her in the job market? 
as a surgeon. A brain yeah. surgeon is what she wants to be. Or she's in brain surgery and suddenly she has a crisis from the medication she's been on for years. Who knows? You know, you never know. Have a seizure while you're working. Or something on. goes wrong in there and they start looking into her past and find out that she exactly. is on this medicine. And I mean, there's you just have to be careful. I'm not saying that a psychiatrist occasionally isn't, but there are ways, natural ways, that you can handle certain things and bring the body back into balance so that those chemicals start. You're right, it is a chemistry, it's a chemical issue. There is chemical imbalances, but there are ways to bring those back into balance. Digestion, mm -hmm. absorption, and what's the third? Utilization, how does your body utilize the chemistry you just digested mm -hmm. and hopefully absorbed? Yeah. How does your body utilize it? And that's when we pull in and understand why the adrenals are so big. Mm -hmm. Because they're responsible for over, what, 25 mineral cortical steroids? So when someone says you have low iron, mm. don't you have to also look at the adrenal glands because that's where you get the steroid for the utilization mm -hmm. of iron? What about zinc? Oh, look, you have zinc deficiency. So don't you have to fix digestion, absorption, mm -hmm. utilization before you can say deficiency? You betcha. So utilization, now there's one element that requires no adrenal steroids, calcium, mm -hmm. that's parathyroid. So, but all your chemicals, and even blood sugars require adrenal steroids to be mm -hmm. metabolized. You got cortisol, so the adrenals are big deals in and the digestion. And if you're stressed, when you produce cortisol, the liver produces sugar. There you How go. many people are out there being told they've got type 2 diabetes and it's just a stress issue? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Easy stuff to fix because when you say type 2, the, again, we're, we're, we're referring to their concept of a disease, even mm -hmm. though it's just a household word anymore. But they're in the concept of yeah. disease. If you're having sugar metabolism problems, where are you going to go? To the gland that metabolizes your sugars for you. Well, where's that? That's the adrenal glands on top of it. And then you see this whole low blood pressure, low blood sugar, lymphatic stagnation, lack of filtration. You start seeing all these things coming in down on the patient. Mm -hmm. Everything, you know. And then it's stagnation yields acidosis, then the pain and swelling, and then, you know, all, all, all of that. Correct all that, and all that backs away, done, the body rebuilds, and you're done, and off you go. And, and yet we're suffered for generations here. It's amazing. It's because of this whole idiocy treatment and, and idea of disease. It's ridiculous. Uh, uh, comes to changing diet and staying motivated. Do you have any? No, we don't. I don't really don't. Number three, I am presently doing a lot of running and fitness and have taken up swimming as well. Just make sure you're filtering while you're doing all these or you could feel your knees and all that. So if you're filtering, you'll be good. But if you're not filtering, not good. I want to build myself a strong body and push myself out of my comfort zone. If you want to build yourself a strong body, fix digestion absorption utilization and you have to you know what we have to do to fix these three because there's one more how do we fix these three we have to go to the very end the butt we have to go to the very last phase of these this four phase cycle and that's elimination exactly if you don't eliminate these metabolites these metabolic wastes in the human body where are they going and these are acids. So if you're not filtering acids out of your eliminative organs, how do you filter eliminative out of the liver? You don't. How do you go to the eliminative organs? So if you're not sweating and you're not filtering in the urine, how are you getting rid of your metabolites? Mm -hmm. You're not. And that's the point. That's where all this gastritis, enteritis, colitis, arthritis, all these itises are just long lines of acidosis and different levels chronic and go back to your acute, subacute, chronic. These are three levels and of course if you're past any of those three levels the last stage is cell death. Well I have so many people that write in and it's I've got parasites, I've got viruses, I've got you know bacteria, I've got yeast and candida. Well okay that's not your stopping point. Keep going. Why do you have those? If you set your trash outside and the trash guy doesn't go for three, four weeks, you're going to start getting maggots and flies and bacteria and, and yes, yes, yes. smells. and You don't think that happens in the body when Thank you're not you. eliminating? Really? And, and the type of food you eat depends on the type of parasite you pull to it, right? I went to the dentist, <laughs> I went to the dentist yesterday. Did you? 
The very first dentist that has ever told me this, he said, you eat the food, the bacteria in your mouth consumes the bacteria, poops, and the acids from that break down the teeth. Most of them just go straight to bacteria. Yeah. He at least said At least he gets acid. to the acids. Exactly. At least he gets to the acid. Now, the other thing he does not understand is that you have a lymphatic system in the mouth, and that's where you get all your, your um, um, abscesses and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. That's, that's, that's all. And remember how your teeth, and this is what we see with parathyroid weakness, translucent teeth. Mm -hmm. You can see that you're not utilizing calcium because you can see through your freaking mm -hmm. teeth. And imagine your bones are kind of that way too. So real important to think about he that. He showed me a picture of what an abscess hooked to a tooth, the root is. It, it was pretty cool. Look online, Google abscess and the teeth. I don't know if you'll find it, but it was a pretty cool picture. It's oh, just wow. a pocket of, of yeah. lymphatic. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. That's all it is. I mean, because that's all it can be. Mm -hmm. You got to understand that's all it can be because that's all that's in the body. You only have two major fluids besides water. You only have your two major fluids, blood and lymph. That's all it can be. But why is it a pocket? It's because it's the body is done just what it does with a cyst or a tumor, and it's just l stagnant lymph. Here, I'm going to hold this back over here so it doesn't hurt anybody else. <laughs> That's all it is. And it'll open right back up and let it out. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about it. The, the supreme one, the, the divine already f figured it out. Yeah. I don't know how I figured all this stuff out. I, 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 I. I mean, it's amazing when you just look at the human body by itself, not to mention all the other creatures and yeah. everything, and then how everything, I mean, you can't help but become a God lover when you just look around, get out of the band of desire and thoughts and everything else. Just look around at the planet you're on. And this is a very low planet. Mm -hmm. And just take a look at it. It's just incredible. The beautiful. Go into gardens and walk around gardens. Beautiful garden. Look at the flower. And did all flower. this come from an explosion? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's... But those are the intellectuals. Yeah. And that's that guy that, um, you know, it's in a wheelchair. I can never remember his name. And he's the, 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 the big etheric thinker. Mm -hmm. And he had this segment the other day. Uh, Hawking? Yeah, Hawkins. Exactly. Hawkins. Hawkins. And, and his whole special was the end result that there is no God. Everything is chemical responses and everything else. And it's like, that's why he's suffering. That's why he doesn't see God. If we got a hold of Hawkins, and re you could regenerate Hawkins even today. Hawking. Hawking. Right. So we got him. Like so, hawk. Hawking. Hawking. Like a hawk. Hawk. Oh, you mean hawk. A hawker. <laughs> but you could take him. Yeah, he is loaded with he, mucus. He is. Well, you've seen one just like him at almost at oh, that yeah. place and pulled her right out of that. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, he could, he doesn't have to stay in that chair. And I bet you five bucks if one of you guys got to him and regenerated him, he would change his belief about there is no God to suddenly, oh, mm -hmm. there is an intelligence that guides chemistry, that mm -hmm. guides magnetics, that guides this. It's behind it all. You can't yeah. put awareness in chemistry because it isn't even in the chemical world. So you can't, Define awareness with chemistry or, or hardly anything. There's no definition. What, how can you define awareness or consciousness? The Hindus call it consciousness. Or we call it awareness. Or What would you call your awakeness? What would you call that? Mm -hmm. What gives you uh, the awake, the me, the I, the whatever you want to say it? That isn't chemistry. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, let me see here. I'm going on a run a marathon run the 15th of October and President. Oh, you should have seen the athlete in our last class. Holy moly. She, she was, was beautiful. Oh, she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. She did. Uh, uh, we, 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 I'm she, meeting with her when I go to. Are you really? Day. Yeah. Are you meeting Anton too, Edwin? I haven't gotten in touch with him yet, but. You should I'd like you can. to. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I'd like to get into that level of thinking too. I mean, he's already doing that, but I'd like to coordinate more mm -hmm. with that bodybuilders, you know, and that sort of thing, just, and she's going out with the F, uh, NFL. Uh, we're going to, we're attempting to, to, to line up some uh, NFL players to look at the CTE well, that they're talking about. Yeah. We've got, uh, we had uh, a lady, what did a class that had some into, was working with a group that was trying to deal with the, the brain damage and that sort of thing. So when you have a brain damage, or you have any trauma to the human body, I don't care where it is, mm -hmm. what system in your body repairs it? Well, you got to have blood. you got to yeah. get nutrition there, no question. That's pretty much a given 
pretty much because if you don't, that whole area will die. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to have blood flow. If you were working on someone with that, you could increase circulation formulas, no question, mm -hmm. right? Increase blood flow oxygenation to that area, damaged area. But does the blood take the damaged cells and get rid of the damaged cells and all that? To buy into that, then you'd have to buy in the fact that a cell can travel in the blood anywhere in the body and somehow scoot over miraculously and make another cell the same consciousness it is, which is ridiculous. So it, 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 it's the lymph system that cleans it. You ever bruise yourself and nose hangs around a while? That's how sluggish your lymph system is. Mm -hmm. You know, your lymph system is what cleans you. And this is another reason why trauma is acidic. And so it's just sitting there and it doesn't get any better because mm -hmm. their diets are protein diets. They're not filtering, I'm sure, in their kidneys. They're, they're highly acidic on top of all this. So how would you repair from trauma? Well, it's just like, you know, the hurricanes that just went through Texas and here in Florida. You've got crews that come in and they, their whole job is to get rid of the damage, the debris, the junk, the, th the, the, the piles that there are beside go. the road. But then you've got the construction crews that come in and start building at that point. And then you've got your Meals on Wheels that come mm -hmm. in and feed you. So you've got your kitchen people yep. coming in, but they're separate than your construction or your, your cleanup crews. Yep. So this is the body. It's the same thing. You have your construction, you your cleanup. you want the same company to bring you your food that carries away your crap? Yeah, no, they don't know. Especially if they put it in the same kitchen. I mean, they put it in the same room or something. I don't know. Same yeah, containers. that's all the crap coming by. Huh? Same containers. <laughs> But that's, that's the whole thing, the, the lymph dumping into the subclavian vein, you know, that's, yeah. that's your, they're, they're t telling you that your sewage system is being dumped into your kitchen. Yeah, impossible. And, and, but I think that the lady that found the glymphatic system, I think is kind of in her own way putting a, a damper on that, mm -hmm. the way you talk about the spinal fluid and everything. So I think she's kind of putting somewhat, but from the head, you know, area. Yep. But when you I found it. a diagram, and I have looked and looked and looked and looked for it again, and I cannot find it. But it showed three pumps within the spinal fluid. The pump down here that pumped uh, it back up. And I, that's the back channels. into Yes. Because you're going to have the channels. So, it, I mean, there's so much. You know, Pat, the, our, our A&P professor, she was saying that almost every day she gets new information that they discover in the body. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize that man is just... Just, just now learning it, and man can't even get the diet right. Well, uh, doctors are learning off of stuff that has been years and years. And yeah, read, read this nineteen hundred book on. It. Yeah. Why? I mean, that's it's that sort of thing, you know. But getting in, and these NFL players, no different than anybody else, no different. You're going to treat them the same way. Mm -hmm. You're going to go right after their lymphatic systems, upper circ, brain, and nerve. I mean, there's so many things that we can fix those guys with. Not even funny. The lower the lymphatic. The, the higher the lymphatic stagnation, I should say, and the lower the adrenals, the longer it's going to take them and the more oh. trauma because that, that head trauma has to be cleaned. You've got glutamate that, that spills and dumps on and starts corroding the neurons and however long that takes to clean is how much damage is there. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a stagnant lymph or lymphatic system in this case, if you got a stagnant lymphatic system and your adrenals are down, it's, it's going to hold that trauma right there. Yeah. It can hold it there for years, but the, you don't hold anything. It, it will expand because your cells are continuing to produce acids, mm -hmm. and the system that's designed to get rid of the acids is stagnant. So you're not getting rid of that. So on top of the trauma, these guys continue to deteriorate. It's obvious. So you can stop deterioration. You just mm -hmm. got to get to that area, and man needs to learn this anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, take a look at which would be the most head trauma: getting butt. Uh, in a uh, in a football game or falling out of the sky and hitting the ground at 85 mile an hour or the water. So this guy totally rebuilt himself from a, a paralyzed situation. Mm -hmm. So don't tell me some NFL football player just have to change their consciousness on the, the mm -hmm. paleo thinking. Yeah. <laughs> because that's why. They're, they're eating the very diet that is inflammatory to humans. So it's spawning inflammation on top of the trauma, mm -hmm. on top of the lymph system, I mean, you can just see that. Well, many of them are already realizing that the high protein diets that they're eating, yeah. they get hurt more yeah. often and they take yeah. longer to heal. Absolutely, and makes them more sluggish and mm -hmm. stiffer. Uh, let me see here. Uh, and presently, I'm exercising every day for two hours. I, you're doing a lot of exercising. Just make sure you're filtering, because when you create all these extra acids, again, the, what we teach is. 
you got to be able to get rid of them, and that's where man's suffering. He has eaten these acid ash, and this is the proof of this, is these acid ash diets. Okay, you can think that everything's broken down, goes in the blood, by carbon nuclides, everything. Bull crap. You, you can see the difference between a paleo diet and, and a raw food diet. You can see the difference between a high protein diet and a not high protein diet in everywhere. Mm -hmm. Studies, tons of studies on the col colon cancer has been studied out the butt. <laughs> no, no pun intended. But no, I think the pun was intended. <laughs> yeah, it was intended. And the last one, 30-year study by the World Health Organization, showing that a high-protein diet does damage the yeah. gut tissue. Da 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 da. So then, if you look at a high-protein diet, it's damage to the kidney or mm -hmm. urinary. So you can't. Well, how, mu how much sense does this make? If they think that you've got kidney disease, they put you on a very low-protein diet. But the minute they put you on dialysis, they expect you to eat a high-protein diet. Well, that field is loaded with, with that. Mm -hmm. Loaded with those things like that. Oxymorons and all these things like that. One says one thing, one says something else, and it's, I mean, it's just unreal. Nobody has their... I, I read a study. Most people that are on dialysis do not die from the actual dialysis. They die from starvation. Ouch. Because when they clean that blood, they're removing oh, yeah. some nutrients. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One guy told me, uh, he was up in Mississippi, I think, on dialysis, and after a dialysis treatment, he sucks down the God's mm -hmm. blend, superfood blends, mm -hmm. you know, because it's just what they do. They suck the... You don't... I mean, it's not good. Yeah. And you just don't mess with the blood. I, yep. I tell you, that's... You Purify do, it with herbs if you must. Yeah. But... Yeah, that's what I say, too. Uh, she also goes on real quick here to say, I have recently heard in one of your videos that spirulina is not okay to be consumed. It's okay if you're not detoxing. Mm -hmm. And spirulina, I, I mean, I studied both of them at one time because Jensen was in split cell corolla. And, and, but all, all, the, all, all the studies show the spirulina better. But why are you consuming single-celled organisms? I thought you hated bacteria and fungus and stuff like that. Mm. It's like Klamath Lake, you know, going after blue-green algae. It's palm scum. All right, so people are taking palm scum to be healthy, and it's like, okay, that's what you think. Did you my, my palm grandma scum? and grandpa had a pond, <laughs> and it was loaded Love. with that green stuff, oh, and yeah. I can't even imagine going and scooping up a cup and drinking it. Because it, because it's like fermentation. It's it's palm scum. <laughs> it, 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 it's it's algae. Mm -hmm. it, it's it, it, it's the same thing as fungi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and people are bitching about having too much fungus in the body, and it's like, oh my god. Also, I have taken a lot. Of, also, she's taken a lot of it, but that, that's okay. It's it's just that superfoods are so much better than going into single cell organisms. Mm -hmm. You know, look at the kelp and look at the alfalfas. These are superfoods, guys. But very few animals in the world have superfood availability. Mm -hmm. How do they live and exist? If you think about it, very few. You know, even horses that are wild, just the big chests and the and the muscles, they don't have alfalfa in the wild. So. Look at that, and then you can take someone like a horse like that and give them half up and beef them up even more. I mean, it, there are just so many cool things in nature. But until now, I, okay, I also consumed some raw keiko and uh, keiko beans. Cacao. 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 Cacao beans. As I feel it gives me a boost on longer runs. You know, they had the carob beans. They used to sell, they sell the carob pods. And then everybody got into eating carob pods. You don't eat carob pods. That's like eating the shell of a nut is exactly what it is. Oh, that was nasty. In the mornings I am drinking uh, machucha green tea. Matcha. Matcha. I am consuming fruits until dinner, melons, now grapes are in season, plums, pears, bananas, and some dried figs. Man, you're sounding like a good... The, the nuts, you know, keep to a minimum, avocados and tomatoes. I had an urge at one time to take supplements, magnesium and potassium. Uh-uh. What happens if you take too much magnesium? What's its twin? Calcium. So if you take too much magnesium, guess what you have? See, you can't take this idea that I can take more magnesium or more minerals mm -hmm. and it's going to be better for me. It's a fallacy because creation is already ratioed in chemistry. And it's, we're already full. This air isn't void. This air is full of chemistry. So when you bring, if you want to increase one chemical or one element over another, 
you're going to mess with that ratio and then you will actually push the other one out. Mm -hmm. You take too much magnesium, you're going to push the little sister and probably a little bit of the phosphorus brother out. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you can't do that in that way. You, you can't, you, it, that's why everything's holistic filled. That's why isolated, we're, we're against the isolated supplements for that exact reason. Exactly the reason. They take one aspect and pull it from it, oh. not realizing what is needed to balance that within the body. The plant knows it. Yeah. It's created to be balanced properly. Yeah. But when you take one aspect of that, you don't have the buffering on the other side mm -hmm. of what needs to go with that to balance that out. Your body has to now deal with that. Exactly. And that's, and that's and a lot of people are taking high levels of supplements. Mm -hmm. And they're taking so many different supplements that I've had people just drop their bags, you know. Yep. And when you start looking at them, they're on major supplements. Mm -hmm. They're on all this calcium and magnesium. They're on all these supplements because everyone had a little right. of this, little of that, little of this, little of that. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. But you know what? You, these, these are the things we've learned in the past. Yeah. Uh, B12, but I have stopped after watching your videos and I don't feel like they were helping me. No. I mean, you can take something and your symptoms can go away, like magnesium can help you poop a little better or can help seizures or something. Sleeper, but yeah. you got to remember in the long run what you're doing. There's mm -hmm. other ways to do it. Use antispasmodic. Use the botanicals that are chemically suited for that sort of thing. Look up the foods that are high in magnesium. Yeah. And, I yeah. mean, yeah, if you've got absorption issues and you and See, you're there comes in this problem. Yeah. Digestion, absorption, utilization, and you, you've got you to always think about those four phases. Yeah. I have people say all the time, well, I tried eating higher magnesium foods. Well, let's look at the stomach. Let's look at how you're digesting stuff and how there you're you absorbing go. stuff. Yeah. Is that your main issue? So you got. And if you take this. the isolated chemistry, the supplements, are you really, you know? Yeah, yeah. See, you got all the other things to think about. Their proper ratios, their pH of the supplement, because remember, the duodenal pH has to be very alkaline. So then, are you invoking your? I mean, it, it, it brings and conjures up a lot of questions. That once you just have a superfood complex, you know, like a superfood, then yeah. you got chemistry and balance. But but notice what they're putting in those superfoods now. What are they putting in the superfoods? Digestive enzymes. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been doing that for a number of years, and that's how used to get me. Digestive enzymes and superfood complexes, and in some superfood complexes, they've been adding supplements to them. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you guys? Because more is better. Yeah. And that's because when you don't understand what causes things, mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing you don't understand what causes it. So you're 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 in la la land. We're we're creating this superfood, which is God's food, but. We don't think it has enough of this, 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 and this in it. So we're going to add that I because is this that obviously isn't as perfect as it should be. And if you look at this, most animals eat mono. Mm -hmm. And if you look at primates, they can just eat a few fruit and be quite, quite filled. How can you be a, a silverback gorilla and live on just oranges and rip somebody apart? You know, you just have to realize bodies are designed for specific chemistries. And we don't even know the half of it yet. We don't. We're we're all spouting off like, but we really don't. Yeah. The 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 creator has created such a a a creation that requires this, like the wheels of a clock, that we speculate. The mind we have all kinds of things because we're in the infancy. The human being is in the infancy in in, in creation. If you think about it, mm -hmm. and they're still blaming God for all their troubles. Mm. Oh, she also wants. I am. Through taking some hemp seeds and hemp protein powder in my smoothies, like and bee pollen, you know I would take so much of protein-rich stuff, honey. Are there any foods I should include, avoid in my diet to sustain my physical activity? Holy crap! <laughs> it's like I said, a superfood complex is the only thing we recommend, and you will actually find that you'll have more energy on a run if you don't eat, honey. You know, don't put, don't, don't invoke your digestive system just before you're going to have a, a, a meat or a, or a bite or whatever you're into, uh, or a run or whatever. Don't eat before you do that. You want to pop up off. You want the most energy available and the highest. And we start thinking about removing the obstructions to your flow of energy, and at the same time eat foods that are the highest in energy because that you you remember everything's a neurological event in your body. And fruit is the highest electrical foods on the planet. So you want a good run, you load up on fruit before you run. I was talking to one bodybuilder and he was saying that he actually, the, the best time to eat and consume is that one hour post 
workout. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a lot. You never do that before a workout because now you're engaging energy demands in your mm -hmm. body, digestive demands, absorb, all types of energetic demands. So you're pulling that energy. Exactly. And the same thought, though, in, in, in detoxification. You know, that's why fasting, mm -hmm. why nature fasts. It, it, it removes the demand for energy by your other organs to give you the body it's detox and the body knows how to detox itself we don't i mean we're just we're just giving it nutrition right. and energy that's all we're doing here and, and herbs that are special for the the organs but that's all we're doing the body is doing this all itself that's mm -hmm. just too cool mm -hmm. you know it knows how to heal itself i mean come on yeah it's amazing cut yourself up all over body goes heals itself mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing if you get a splinter body works it out i mean it's just totally amazing Oh, this is the. Oh, look at all these names from around the world. Mm hmm. Selah. That's beautiful. Selah. That's beautiful. I am a 30 year old male. Mm. Uh, had surgery for left oh, wow, hernia in the 08 with PP mesh. You know, they did find that mesh in hernias uh, was toxic. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, maybe this is a new one. This was in 08. I don't know, but that mesh they claim was toxic. So if you don't have anything that's titanium or anything that's an alkaline metal, you never want to put an acid metal in your body. Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to have some serious crap going down. He's got chronic inflammation, nerve damage, etc. I don't think I'd make it to 35. Look at that. He's 30 year old male? Yeah. And from a hernia, he had a surgery from a for left hernia in 08. Chronic inflammation, nerve damage oh, from the surgery probably. Mm. You'll see those meshes were... Right. I didn't think I'd make it to the right. I recently found your teachings and began my detox three three weeks ago on 90% fruit now and awaiting herbs. I developed a perfect square rash on my mesh site. <laughs> you know, when they think they're helping, helping. You know, when you have a hernia tissue, what's what what's the problem in that tissue? Connective, right? So when you want to repair something, first of all, you got to get away away from the foods that rob that initiate this calcium yep. buffering system. And whether medical doctors like it or not, there is a calcium buffering system. Pat and I read this to you from universities around the world that acknowledge the body has a calcium buffering system. When you get with that, then it explains varicose veins, spider veins, bruising easy, all the things like that, when you start to understand that there is a calcium buffering system that's much greater than the bicarbonate buffering system. Mm -hmm. Bicarbonate buffering system, in my opinion, is more for local buffering and maybe a little blood buffering. So it, it's, it's not nothing like medical doctors claim it is. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and a rash over this, right over the, oh, that's yeah. wild. That, that, I bet that's, it. he's got the toxic mesh in him, I bet yeah. you. Uh, I developed it perfectly. <laughs> Already lost 18 pounds and feeling great. My question is, is it productive to detox with mesh still inside? You have no choice. Yeah. You just have no choice. And you want to keep that area clean anyway. And, and the other thing is, you want to, the reason for the hernia is too much acidosis anyway, interstitially, sucking out the calcium, weakening connective tissue. So you want to really get all this acid out of that herniated area. And that'll strengthen itself. And you want to go, forget the screen, you want to go back and strengthen this yourself. Mm -hmm. You want to think about your pituitary, your parathyroid, and start strengthening this yourself because, let me tell you, there was bad stuff along with this mesh here not too many years ago. So I wouldn't, I would go back and fix it the right way and then let the body deal with the wire mesh as it is. Mm -hmm. You never know what might have to be done in the future with that. Uh, so he's feeling good. That's a good job. It is productive. To, uh, most who get it removed get worse from removal surgery. I know. I'm just getting ready to say that too because tissue goes all through it and stuff like that. And it's just one bad thing after another. So I think you can go back and fix that. Get get your kidneys filtering. Get all that acid out mm -hmm. of those tissues there. And I think you're, yeah. you know, you'll at least have a minimal breakdown of the water. Yeah. I don't know anything else really to... That's a, I've got a lot of uh, women that are getting um, breast. You got to weigh your weigh the balances. They've got breast implants and they're looking at getting them removed. And in that case, I would say absolutely because of the leakage factor and um, the actual mold that they find growing on. Yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah, implants. I'm not for um, foreign objects in the body. If a woman's small, she's small. If she's large, she's large. There is an exception, though, to that. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because I've never been able to get extremely large breasts reduced by detox. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some women are so huge that breast reduction is, you know, I mean, there's some women that are very large, yeah. and it's just the, the pull and the stress to the chest and lungs. And, but that's, man has to accept their, their, their bodies and everything. If you're small, get healthy, you could get enlarged a little bit. Our female reproductive form was enlarging breasts for a while. We were getting calls from Portugal about this. So older ladies going, I don't want my breasts to get bigger. And we were saying, no, it's toning them. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, holy crap. But it's possible. I don't know how much by getting your growth hormones and everything up. That would be still best draw, but getting your growth hormones up. And now, see, there's a, there's a marketing strategy. There's a marketing strategy. You, you put pituitary herbs in a formula and call it boob job. Hey, I like it. <laughs> no, I didn't say it's that. Kind of, it's kind of like our... our Let's rewind. <laughs> oh, you're bad. That's kind of like our, what is it, our, our, our no glow? Yeah. <laughs> That's for radiation and air exposure. We call it no glow. Yeah. Well, because the IRS, the, IRS, the uh, FDA is so down on us. And mm -hmm. every every word, you can't you can't put different words on it. It's like, oh, you creep. You can't use heal. You can't <laughs> use cure. You can't use... I mean, it's, it's, unreal. it's unreal. It's like inflammation. Exactly. They, like they have the market on inflammation. Like they are the ones. It's. Yeah, but they get sued over that because that's actually a natural body response. So mm -hmm. they can't. You can't uh, copyright natural body responses, assholes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Feel the corky today. Yeah. Johan. I used to have a woman. A warm. a warm energy. Please <laughs> have a warm energy around me. Oh, I think it's time for lunch. How do you better read that? Hi, hi, Johan. Uh, I used to have a warm energy around me, and it surrounded, and it sounded like many flies flying close together. Everything was extremely intense, and life was wonderful. I sort of had a portal above me, like a string. It felt like. And I was extremely free. <laughs> Keep going. That's the etheric world you were hearing. It's like I already knew this world was in trouble as a kid. But instead of helping, I've been extremely sick. Did I have to go through this pain to learn about true healing and reawakening myself? I have a huge need to bring my power back. Good man. Yep. You know what? And a lot of you are going to find that same scenario there, guys. And I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. And that's what we're here for you, also spiritually, because you're, 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 you're coming into your own. A lot of you guys are wakening up here. And when you start hearing these, the buzzing of the bees, mm -hmm. that's that's the sound of the etheric plane. Your spirit makes noises as it, as it, as it moves, as it, as it expresses itself. And you can hear it if you listen. So many people are listening outwardly. And I try to tell them, spend some time and listen within. Close this off and listen within yourself. And just listen. It's like stop thinking and you'll start hearing sounds. And it depends where your consciousness is at. The soul plane up here, consciousness is the single note of the flute. Mm. It's the single note of the flute is how spirit expresses itself where there's no more duality. It's wild. And some is orchestrated music. You can hear music. I remember I was buying a Ford or something. I was in a Ford dealer looking around, and this guy, and this salesman, this old man was telling this salesman, he said, I've been, I've been to doctor after doctor. I hear music in my ears all the time, he said, and they, 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 there's nothing they can do for me, and I, I don't know how to get rid of it. So I kind of walked up and said, do you think it's something you have to get rid of? I said, maybe it's a, maybe it's a celestial music you need to listen to. Maybe it's your time to motivate out of here. But I, I don't know, you know, but listen to these inner sounds of that, and it's really cool because you can you can tell what levels you are <clears throat> also by the sounds, <coughs> excuse me, associated with those levels. Mm -hmm. It's cool. So it's spirit. It's, 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 it's a life force. It's a prana. Who cares what you name it? <clears throat> and, and aren't we all sent here in some forms to experience so that we can share mm -hmm. and help others? Mm -hmm. I think. I think that's why God divided himself in so many of us. So it's, it's all buddies and everybody but everybody fights each other it's like why mm -hmm. come from the same source why do we fight each other i was thinking like, how beautiful can we make it yeah you know really how yeah. beautiful can we make this how healthy can you get i mean all these questions like that instead of the opposite things mm -hmm. this is another one? Oh yeah oh this is marco oh okay maybe not the same yeah hi robert my question is about uh tourette's syndrome and 
ticks, which I have had since been an infant. I'm 22 now. My ticks involve eye rolling upwards, uh, facial uh, uh, glitching, grimacing, uh, neck twitching and jerking, uh, stomach tensing, uh, eye get the stomach tensing, mm-hmm. eyebrow lifting, and hand and arm movement. Well, it, it was, you know, there's this, uh, not the Tourette's, but you have this trigeminal neuralgia, and it all comes around the upper C-spine, the, the uh, uh, first and second vertebrae all up in that area. But we have a man working with us with ticks, and we, I had a, another young man, I don't know, he could still be listening to us, he went over to, uh, to uh, Thailand. Uh, he had ticks real bad, not anymore. Mm-hmm. He got worked them right out. Went to, well over Thailand, got into the high fruit, and uh, went on the herbs. I mean, he really went on herbs. Bought, yep. bought individual herbs, started concocting his own yep. stuff, and pulled them right out of him. And Drew, when he when he eats right, you don't see any ticks. Right. You're seeing less and less now with him than he had before because he's more and more raw. Mm-hmm. So he has less and less ticks. Yeah. Make sure your chiropractic straight and and get get lips moving. That's all I can say. Get your get GI those track. adrenals up. Get those get all these things like that. Because these are all antispasmodics. Even a raw diet is an antispasmodic diet, and you can use antispasmodics for these ticks. Stomach exactly. sensing, right there. I would love to see his eyes and I'd look love at the transverse to see it. colon. Exactly. And I'd love exactly. to see what his autonomic system exactly. looks like. Exactly. Exactly. That that eye picture on this would be interesting. Mm-hmm. But you can put you can get yourself out of the same with trigeminal neuralgia yeah. and things like this. You can get yourself out of these things. But again, you're going after the same reason. The same reason you see ticks or you see any type of neural responses, spasticity, or anything else. You got to understand this is involved in weaknesses, neurotoxins, and things like this. You've got you've got medical doctors willing to put the, you, you as an infant full of toxic chemicals and and thimerosals and mercury toxicity, all this stuff like this. Are yeah. willing to give this. To you at a few days old now. So you have a modality willing to start taking you to Hellville right off when you're born. What's up with that? And they're giving this to babies when they will God. completely admit that the amount that they are giving is toxic to a uh, an adult that weighs 200 and some pounds. And yet they're giving it to, to little babies. By the time a child is, I think, five years old, they've had close to 55 vaccinations. Somebody's going to be held accountable and the shit's going to hit the fan and then hopefully some people are going to spend some lofty times in jail yeah. thinking about all the sweetheart babies around the world by the millions at ADD, ADHD, but worse of all, the seizure ones. Mm-hmm. God, horrible. I've uh, been raw three months with a two-week watermelon fast. Oh my God. Where one day I suddenly became extremely numb down my right arm and lost my significant amount of vision and uh, felt sick. I then went to bed and woke up feeling fine. Any advice for ticks? Love you, man. Love you too, bro. Let me tell you, that is a gnarly healing crisis. Mm -hmm. Now, you want a healing crisis that's scary? That one. Mm -hmm. Because, and again, this is all involved here. And it could be partly involved in the upper C-spine, cerebellum. Like I said, I'd love to see his eyes. Yeah. But... You just got to get up in there, upper circuit brain and nerve, use antispasmodic, and start getting these bowels cleaned up, you know, so everything can drain here right, get your yep. kidneys to filter, you know, like you said, on the adrenal, but that's part of it, you have to get on the mm-hmm. adrenals, that'll boost your neurotransmitters, and, well, it's good for the myelin sheets, but also your steroids for antacids. Mm-hmm. So all of if, that is... If you have times when they are more intense, take an extra shot of the antispasm, the adrenal, and a moonshine yarrow. That helps calm things down, especially with the autonomic system, yeah. very nicely. Yeah, and see, and, and work yourself back out of this because you will. You'll work yourself out of it. You'll get less and less ticks and that sort of thing, mm-hmm. and you work yourself out of it. It's the only way we've seen that anybody can do it. Yeah. But it's it's going in and fixing the acidosis because right. you can see a multitude of these sort of things. Yeah. With the same type of problem with acidosis and limb stagnation, it, you you name it, and I think that that in creation is is what's kept things popping and different is that you see different symptoms yeah. from different places even though you can we can tie them all together easy some people that work with their mind only can't tie them together because when you work with thought you you're not looking with that jigsaw overview mm-hmm. you're looking at little pieces yeah. and so you can't see the overview because you're too busy looking at the little pieces mm-hmm. and as long as you look at the little pieces the mind can only overview so much mm-hmm. so I think that's part of the problem when you store in the causal mind then you've got pieces stored yeah. 
And, you know, this is this is a neurological thing, so it's going to take you a little bit of time to work yourself out of it. Anything neurological is going to take a little bit longer because Absolutely. it's... It's, you it's know, neurological. It's yeah. high energy centers mm -hmm. of the body. This is the highest energy center of the body. What's the three main energy flows of the human body? Mm -hmm. Blood, nerve, and lymph. With the nerve being the most outstanding electrical system on the planet. Mm -hmm. Why would it not make sense then we need to consume the highest electrical food? Yeah. I mean, when you, when you think about homeostasis and you think about these things, and you think about electrical and, and physics, then you think about you have this nervous system that's supposedly the greatest nervous system of all the vertebrates on the planet. The human nervous system is supposedly the supreme nervous system, central and autonomic of all the creatures on the planet. Primate second, it just goes down like that. And that's why the argument of the fruit and the size of the brain. It's not about the size of the brain, it's about the electrical output and the needs of mm -hmm. the brain of that. And you can see by consuming lower energy foods, it keeps man in lower states of consciousness. Yep. Yep. So by increasing, and you guys see this on yourselves, by increasing the, the high energy foods, you start thinking more etherically, more divinely, more, more lovingly, more everything like that. Mm -hmm. And you eat the meat, you're down grunt, you're down in that anger, you're down in the violent areas and the, and the, and the uh, gossiping areas and things like this. Yeah. I wish, I wish I was as relaxed as a mother now, then, when my kids were little, as I am now. Yeah. I, things just wash off me right now. Back then, it was like any little thing was like prickly, like, what, 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 what? Yeah. <laughs> Life beats you up. It does. Life beats you up. My there kids probably it. wish I was like this back then, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. All I remember about my youth is work, work, work. Mm. You know, Indiana, farmland, city, everything. Is I was work, always work, work. up to something. Yeah, back in Indiana, though, the lady, I mean, a lot of the old farmer dudes were, I don't know how to put it, the, the, the female was always put on the pedestal. And like, my sister never cleaned the barns out. They were her horses after I learned about motorcycles. I didn't want my horse no more. I loved him, but it was like, no, you're too slow, baby. I need a motorcycle. You know? So, but I still had to clean the barns out. And it's like, yeah, my parents, it was just that way. You know, they honored women pretty good then. Uh, I can't even pronounce that word. Alik Sandar? Sandar? Sandy Sandar. I, I don't know. Hi, Dr. Morris, can you make a video about herbs, types of herbs, basics of herbology, your top 10 or 20 herbs? I used to do that in classes. I used to have the top 20. And I used to give it to them and say, you go learn this, you know, go buy them, go learn them, taste them, play with them, mm -hmm. learn all you can about them, and it'll take 20 minutes. Mark your bottles. Mark your bottles. <laughs> Mark your bottles. <laughs> I would like to know. Boy, have I learned that lesson. I, was, I can't, I, the first herbal discourse series I ever took, I think it was Dominion in Canada, a very good herbal school. And uh, that's the first thing they said, make sure you mark <laughs> your bottles. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'd like to mo know more about adaptogens and if you could reduce your formulas to two to three herbs, which ones would you use? You know, interesting thought this guy has because I tried that. I wanted to reduce my herbal formulas down to uh, no more than four or five herbs per bottle. And that would give about 20, if you had four herbs per bottle, that's 25% of each herb. Unless you wanted to give a little more to one herb because you liked it over the other one or however your, your own consciousness dictated. Mm -hmm. But there's so many incredible herbs. That's a, that is difficult. And it is difficult because we do use formulas knowing which single herbs are really at the top shelf mm -hmm. and other ones are a little below that. It's very different. I mean, we have our opinions. But research hasn't been done on our level of thinking to, to even begin to, to tap into that. Um, so but I tried that. And I just, I, I can't get less than five, it seems like. Yeah. It's just difficult to do that. Uh, and if you're making a formula that you wanted to cover both the kidneys and adrenals, you would have to share herbs in there for the kidneys and adrenals. Mm -hmm. It'd be a great formula because you'd be dealing with kidneys and adrenals. We have to put them in two formulas because we're after the kidneys aggressively. Yeah. Uh, if we weren't, uh, you could do that and make a formula that would pick up the adrenals, which controls the kidneys, and it'd be a great formula. In our formulas, though, we do have some adrenal herbs in our kidney form. If you look at the kidney form, you'll see some that'll trip up the adrenals a little bit, but nothing to like what you would do taking two formulas. Uh, also, can you do a video series where you explain your formulas better? 
Uh, I do have one out there. We do have one for the company that explains why I created these formulas and that sort of thing. I don't get into teaching herbology, and I probably won't online here, mm -hmm. because that's a big deal. That's a that's a lot of that's a lot of work on my part <laughs> to mm -hmm. teach a class on botanicals. But uh, can you do a video where you explain your detox school? Oh, well. I don't know, our detox school We're, is that simple. You guys are all in detox school every time you turn on a, a video. A video. <laughs> hey, basically, you are. Yeah. yeah I mean, and, that's I what. Mean, you go after the kidneys, you get the lymph moving. It's all about flow. It's just like energy. It's just like electrical in the body. Yeah. The electrical in the body stops, see ya, yeah. you're gone. It's it. <laughs> the blood stops, you're gone. see ya, you're gone. Lymph stops, okay. So that's going to take a little bit longer, but well, you're going to see the things that are cause you to be gone. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of like when you leave so. the body. If you don't, if you cut the silver cord, you're gone. You know, you can leave the body and still be connected to it, but you cut that cord and you're done. Mm -hmm. You're done. You won't. You won't come back. And that's the sort of thing. You know, the energy is energy, and it's like, yeah. You know, it's all connected. It's all. I mean, it all comes from the same source. It's very difficult to understand when you're looking I, through the mind. When I started into this, I would pick out a disease quote-unquote disease, a label, mm -hmm. and I would read all about it and what their take on it was, and then I would adapt that into what our take was. Exactly. And that's how I learned the majority. I learned more doing that yep. than I learned in any school or class that I've taken so far. Well, and I think that in the future, we need to put that up online because I've been thinking of putting up online the difference between medical consciousness, mm -hmm. their thoughts on things, and the nature naturopathy view, not naturopathic medicine, but naturopathy's view of it. Craig and I might be on to something for you. Really? Okay, so we need to talk about that. <laughs> yes. But expand that to more what you were thinking. Well, I'm just the. You mean the website that we're looking at? Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, where was I going with that? You know, expanding, and like, in other words, naming a disease, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about Renard's, right? That was Robert Renard, was it, or something like that? These, these are all medical doctors' names. Mm -hmm. Hashimoto, mm -hmm. that was a medical doctor. So these are all medical doctors that gave their name on a set of symptoms. Yeah. What one has to do, what Marcy's saying, which is what, which is what I would love to do, is put the put the their disease up. And list you the symptoms and show you what system yeah. is down in your body because of those symptoms, where those symptoms are actually coming from, not the disease. Mm -hmm. That's just a name they give, a set of symptoms. Your symptoms are very real, but symptoms bore out of two sciences, yeah. chemistry and physics, and mainly one. Chemistry. Uh, you can't you, you can't argue outside of that because everything is chemistry here. We complicate we complicate things we so do. much. We do. It's just like you said that the you know. Mm -hmm. It's all about blood and lymph. You get those. You keep those things in balance, and you don't have a problem. You do not have a problem. And the proof of this is that there's not much you guys aren't curing down mm -hmm. there. You know, they, you, we got a couple of advanced cases that these guys are just very difficult for any of us to get. But, you know, when you're that advanced and your lymph nodes are hardened or removed, and here's another blowback I think we're seeing, and I don't know, it's scaring me, and I hope I'm wrong. We've asked for years, what tissues do the tonsils mm. affect? And guess what we're seeing so much now? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Scary. Exactly. Scary as holy heck, because without lip nodes, the world gets very scary, even for us. Mm -hmm. You know, very scary because... I just had a, a client in tumor. They removed the tumor. They removed 25 lymph nodes, and only three of them were actually cancerous. You know, it's it just sick. Mm -hmm. So only two of them had cancer cells in them. Three. Three. So the body was at least able to get cancer cells to the lymph nodes. 
I mean, give me crazy. But you could make a lip node, I guess, a cancer cell out of a lip node cell. Mm -hmm. You know, you could do that probably if you keep it too acidic too long. Right. It's all about intracellular acidosis, not extracellular acidosis. Extracellular is inflammation. Intracellular, that's when you're going to start breaking down the organelles. You're going to start mm -hmm. breaking down the mitochondria, DNA. You're going to augment that. Well, when you look at that, we see it from chemistry. But if we spiritually look at that, you're simply augmenting the con the electrical consciousness of the cell. You're augmenting that, kind of like mm -hmm. you're cooking your vegetables. You're changing the whole consciousness of the plant. Yeah. Well, what are acids? Acids break down. That's what they're that's what they're designed to do. So if that acid is sitting around a cell wall, thyroid, colon, you name it, liver. Thank you. It, it's going to start breaking that cell wall down, and it's eventually going to make it into the nucleus. Hello. Hello. I mean, that's a given. But not only that, but think of the cell constantly producing acids mm -hmm. and not being able to get them out. Like constipation, mm -hmm. instead of 30 days, years. You can't poop for years. You wouldn't live. Mm -hmm. Neither does your cells. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing. It's auto intoxication. When you don't, when you don't eliminate, now you're tripping into auto intoxication, yeah. re reabsorption, uh, all those things like that. It's like, oh no, 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 not good. Mm -hmm. So I think we did pretty good today. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah, I think we got them enough. We only have now. This is a whole new stack here that yeah. she put on here, but this is more. These. This is more recent. Remember, guys, go after your systems, not your symptoms. Oh, that's beautiful. When you go after that's your beautiful. symptoms, you tend to go to supplements. When you go, or when you go after symptoms, you tend to go after supplements. When you go after systems, you're going to go after the lymph, you're going to go after the kidney, you're going to go after yeah, the things baby. that you need to be gone after. When, when, when you go to somebody and they put you on vitamin D and B and zinc and iron and all this stuff, that's like having a hole in your tire and stopping at every gas station along the way <laughs> to fill that tire rather than just changing the tire. Change, get to the root of the issue. Absolutely. You know, this whole idea of treating symptoms, if we can get away from that and ask what's causing this symptom, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that you can pull all the way back to the two pillars of chemistry, alkaline and acid, and, and start there with your, with your questions and answers, mm -hmm. which side of chemistry. Then you can go which system is involved because there's a system for each side. So you start tracing this right to the cause, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it, but it helps to understand the lymphatic system. It helps to understand the kidneys. It mm -hmm. helps the filtration of it. It does help to understand that. Yeah. If you're the medical doctor and you didn't, you don't understand the lymph system. You, you can't answer any of these questions. Right. That's the problem. It's also the problem naturopathically. If they don't understand this system, well, when when I had that spider bite, I went to a uh, a podiatrist, but specialist. She specialized in it. And I started asking all kinds of, she kept telling me, don't get circulation to the toe, don't get any, you know, that. I'm like, well, wait a minute. Isn't the lymphatic system what is going to remove that poison? And if I can't get circulation, I'm not going to get the lymphatic system moving and pulling that poison out. And her response to me was, I don't know about that. I don't know about well, you that. You know what? She was honest enough. It was she, right? Absolutely. She was honest enough to admit it. I bet a man, I, he might have had a different answer. I challenged her left and right but when i called back in six months later to find out about a bill she was no longer there she had went to an integrative medicine now i'm not saying that was me but what if that well, one you probably little, had a big thing in it may, maybe one thing that i said just triggered Tripper. that last thing that, that made neat. her flip that is neat too and i i, I love this because don't ever be afraid of your medical doctor. I see so many people so intimidated yeah. and afraid of what? Someone who doesn't know what causes anything? You hired them. Why? Exactly. Why would you be intimidated over a medical doctor? Come on in, honey. Uh, we're just about done. Uh, when they don't even know. So don't be intimidated. You guys know more than they do about the situation. So don't ever be intimidated. Have faith in your own awareness and your own uh, and own knowledge and stuff. Your doctor should encourage your questions. He shouldn't get ticked exactly. off when you ask them. Exactly. You only get ticked off if you don't know how exactly. to answer them. If they're intimidated. Exactly. Love you guys so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Drink and eat a lot more navel oranges. That's your baby. And we love you guys. Absolutely. And remember, 
every day, spend time yep. with the kid. Yep. Love you Let guys. every breath be a connection. Exactly. Love every breath be a connection. Yep. All right. Love you guys.